What's up, YouTube? T Movies here. Now, here is my top 10 favorite 1988 movies. Now, I actually did this video yesterday, but I saw I had to redo it because. Because I admit, the video wasn't all that great and whatnot, so I decided. And there was actually a one, like one film that I literally forgot to add in my top 10 list. And also, yeah, so I decided to uh, redo that top 10 list. So, anyway. With uh, that being said, here's my 10 favorite movies of the year of 1988. Well, it's awesome movies trends uh, during one this year, by the way, so... Yeah, but uh, anyway. Anywho, uh, coming in at number 10 is going to be Earth Girls Are Easy. I love this movie. It's a really great... Uh, it's like a musical sci-fi comedy. It featured... Um, it actually featured like a young uh, Jim Carrey one of like in one of his like uh, earliest roles it also featured a young Jeff Goldblum and uh, Damon Wayne and then uh, it's about this a uh, valley girl named uh, Valerie who is like dealing with uh, her douchebag of a uh, fiance named Ted played by uh, Charles Rocket and so like uh, it so like when like a so she ends up finding like a, a trio of aliens um who have like crashed? Who pretty much crashed their uh, sh uh spaceship in their sw in her swimming pool, and they end up like when she first finds the aliens, they uh they're like a uh, furry and all, but so they can like look human. She ends up taking uh them to her uh friend's salon, and and pretty much uh take all the hair off and and in it they uh the aliens end up becoming human, and one of the aliens is of course played by Jim Carrey. The other is played by uh, Jeff Goldblum, and you know the main one is played by. Uh, oh, and the one of the other ones is played by uh, Damon Wayans. Jeff Goldblum's the main one, by the way. And you know, Valerie ends up actually pretty much falling for Jeff Goldblum's character, and Jim Carrey and Damon Wayans. And like I said, that it was this was like their earliest roles. Like lots of people always keep thinking that uh, Jim Carrey got his start in the '90s with The Mask and, and all, but no, he actually. Like, his first feature film was, like, this vampire movie uh, called Once Bitten. But then he also did, like, a he appeared in Peggy Sue Got Married, Earth Girls Are Easy. Like, his big break was in the 90s. Like, the 90s is where uh, Jim Carrey got his major start. But it wasn't really, really like, his, uh... Um... But it wasn't, like, his uh, first major, uh, role, you know. But, uh, yeah, Earth Girls Are Easy, like... They, it's considered as a musical, but it's a whole lot of music in this as you expect. There's like only very, like about maybe two songs and like music in the background, but that's pretty much it. I never, I literally never consider this as a musical. I mean, there is like probably one of my favorite songs in this is uh, Julie Brown's song I'm, "I'm a Blonde." And by the way, Julie Brown is such a scene still in this. I and. She was really good looking back then. And you know what? Actually, Jilly Brown, if you guys like see recent photos of her now, she's like, I believe she's in her 50s, I think, or maybe. Yeah, I think she's in her 50s. And I'll say, she still looks good for her age. But uh, anyway. Yeah, and uh, you also got um the guy from uh, Better Call Saul is in this, uh, Michael McCain. He plays like a. Uh, kind of like a, uh, like a hippie, like a hippie pizza guy here. Like, he stole lots of scenes. Charles Rocket was great. Such an awesome film. If you guys never seen Earth Girls Are Easy, go check it out. It's a really funny one. And kind of one of the most um, underrated 80s films. I mean, whenever you hear people talk about 80s films, like, people barely, barely talk about Earth Girls Are Easy. It's a really good one. And I, I probably watch this movie lots of times when it's on TV. I really enjoy it. All right, coming in at number nine is going to be the, the Tom Hanks classic, Big. Now, lots of people probably have this maybe a little higher in their list, but uh, the films that's a little higher, I saw like a little more, but that does take away of how great Big is. I mean, in Big, I mean, in Big, it's pretty much about like this 12-year-old uh, played by this actor named uh, David Moscow. Who you know wants to be uh, 
pretty much wants to be big and all, so uh, he makes a wish and, uh, you know, um, like, he ends up turning into, like, a 30-year-old man played by Tom Hanks. So Tom Hanks is pretty much a, a 12-year-old trapped in a 30-year-old's body. And if that doesn't sound familiar, it's because we just had films similar to that. Like, that movie Little that just got released, uh, that's similar. Shazam is a little similar, so that's kind of why it sounds a little familiar. It was, of course, directed by Pe- the late, great Penny Marshall. This is, pro- this is a really great 80s-themed uh, film. You know, you got the uh, the classic piano scene, really great scene there. Uh, the late, great um, Robert Loja was in this as, uh, as Tom Hanks' boss. You know, it, it was really funny. It, it had lots of heart to it. Such a fantastic movie. If you guys never seen um, never seen Big by now, do yourself a favor. Watch Big. It's a great one. All right, coming in at number eight is going to be Ivor Reitman's classic, Twins. I mean this. I mean this film is pretty much about like um, these two uh, these two guys who are like separated from birth by. Um, and their mother, um, named Mary Ann, uh, played by Bonnie uh, Bartlett, you know, was told, like, they're dead and not. So, uh, and the brothers in this are, of course, played by, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and, uh, and Danny DeVito. And you've got Danny DeVito as, like, a street hustler who's, like, uh, who's pretty much, um, is living out in, uh, Los Angeles. And you got uh, Julius, played by uh, Arnold, who uh, is like raised by a scientist, named, uh, played by Tony J, who ends up growing, um, pr- grows up to be uh, pretty humble and strong. He becomes a Terminator. I mean, that's really what it is. He's not actually a Terminator, but you guys know what I mean. And I really like the chemistry between uh, both Arnold and uh, and Dane DeVille. Like, their chemistry steals this movie really well. And they were also, like, there was also, like, rumors about a twin sequel with Arnold, uh, Dane DeVito, and Eddie Murphy, which still never really happened, and I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but my god, I still want to see that. And, and after this, uh, Arnold and Dane DeVito worked together again in, um, in the movie Junior, which stung, but Twins is a classic. It has some really funny lines, some funny moments. And, boy, it's been a while since I've seen Twins. I, I remember I watched this as a kid, and I really enjoyed it the first time I saw it. And if you guys never seen Twins by now, go check it out. It's a really great one. And whoever knew that Arnold and Dane DeVito play brothers perfectly? I mean, that's pretty cool there. All right. Coming in at number seven is going to be Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Directed by the great uh, Rob Zemeckis, you know, starring um, starring the great uh, Bob Hoskins. You got uh, Christopher Lloyd as uh, the villain Judge uh, Doom. You've got um, the, I mean, it's a film where like it's cartoon cartoon characters mixed in the real world, and that's pretty cool right there. I mean, I mean, seeing um, a film where like you know. A cartoon character teams up with a uh, with a detective. I mean, I guess Happy Time Murders is sort of similar to this, but uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit is a it's a classic. You know, you got uh, Kathleen uh, Turner as the voice of Jessica Rabbit, and lots lots of people today will tell you of how much they had it. Like, I think Jessica Rabbit is one of the few cartoon characters lots of people have a crush on, which is a little weird considering. Which is weird, because considering Jessica Rabbit is a cartoon character, but okay. but uh, she is still a good-looking character. Right? Come on. But uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit is just such an awesome film. If you guys never seen it, give it a go. And and I still saw. Sort of, I still really want to see a sequel to this, but you know, but with the passing of Bob Hoskins, I don't know if it'll work or not, but. And we and we got like newer uh, cartoons since then, and of course Space Jam also try uh, also uh, did the similar thing as well with our uh, cartoons in the real world. But uh, 
But uh, yeah, I just, I love this movie. It's really great. All right, coming, coming in at number, yeah, coming in at number six is going to be Beetlejuice. I mean, say his name three times, he'll appear. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And, you know, it's directed by uh, the great Tim Burton, starring Michael Keaton, maybe, uh, like, his second best role out, like, after Batman. You know, you got uh, Alec Gordon and Gina Davis is in this. And in it, you know, they end up, like, dying in a car accident. And so, like, they end up finding themselves uh, stuck um, in a haunt, like, they pretty much uh, find themselves uh, stuck in, like, a haunt, stuck uh, haunting their uh, co uh, country resident. And so they are, like, unable to leave the house. So you got, like, uh, this, uh, this uh, couple and their daughter who end up buying the home. So, like, they want to attempt to uh, scare scare them away, but they have any, but they pretty much have, like, uh, any success. They don't really have much success. So they end up hiring uh, Beatrice, played by Mike McKeon, to, uh, to pretty much uh, get rid of them. And Beatrice, I mean... Uh, we actually got, like, a Broadway show of Beatrice, which I haven't seen, but, uh, I believe it won, like, a couple of Tony Awards or something like that, but, uh, anyway, Beatrice is just awesome. I mean, it's, it's a, uh, you know, it's a classic, uh, Michael Keel looked great as a role. You know, uh, probably one of, uh, Tim Burns, uh, yeah, it's definitely one of Tim Burns' uh, best work. Really awesome movie. I mean, it's creepy. It's funny. It's you know you had a young uh, Winona Ryder in this. Um, Jeffrey Jones and uh, Catherine O'Hara was in this. It had a really great dinner scene. If you guys never seen Beetlejuice by now, go watch Beetlejuice. It's a great one. All right, coming in at number five is probably my favorite horror movie of that year. That's going. To Child's Play. I mean, who doesn't love Child's Play? I mean, of course, we just had the uh, remake that just got released uh, last month, which I really dug that that reboot of Child's Play that just got released. But the original is still the best. I mean, you got uh, you got Brad Dorf who plays uh, Charles Lee Ray and Chucky in this, and probably one of the best uh, horror origin stories I've seen. Like, maybe it has one of the best origin stories, like, non-superhero origin stories I've ever seen, where, uh, you know, Charles Lee Ray ends up, you know, getting killed, and he transfers his soul into a doll, and that's who, uh, you know, how, pretty much that's how he becomes Chucky and all. And you got, uh, Detective Mike Norris, played by, uh, Chris Randon, who's, like, on there, uh, who's trying to, um, track down, like, a gruesome, like, couple of killings that Chucky is, um, involved with. You got uh, Alex Vincent as a character, as the uh, kid Andy who uh, who ends up owning um the doll and people like I still never understand how come people thought that uh, Andy does these killings. I mean that kid couldn't even uh you know make breakfast properly. How would he do any killing? I mean yeah, but uh, anyway, but uh, Charles Play is it's a great film. It's like I said, it's one of my favorite horror movies of all time. It's you know uh, the one who plays um Karen uh, Barkley uh. The actual name is uh, Catherine Hicks. Uh, she was great. Yeah, I just love Child's Play. And, of course, I like the sequels as well. You know, not so long ago, I did my uh, rank, my ch uh, Chucky rankings. And, of course, this was in that list. It's awesome, man. And, you know, it still holds up today. And, you know, it's still so creepy. It's just fun, entertaining. I just really enjoy that. Like All right. Nice. Hey, hey. Uh. Coming in at number four is going to be Coming to America. I mean, before we had, uh, before we had, uh, T'Challa from Black Panther, we had Prince, ha we had Prince Hakeem 
and Coming to America. It's one of Eddie Murphy's best works. I mean, you know, it's pretty much like about this uh, prince play, uh, name, named uh, Prince Hakeem, who, who is pretty much like the uh, prince of a uh, wealthy African uh, country. And he pretty much wants, like, a wife, so he ends up, who, like, will love him this, uh, despite of his uh, title. And so he ends up, uh, like, moving to, uh, pretty much heading to uh, New York City and... Prince Hakim ends up going to like going to New York City to find to find himself a wife, and you know he ends up like uh, falling for this uh, woman. Uh, he has to fall for this woman named uh, Lisa, played by uh, Shari uh, Healy, and he also ends up having a sidekick played by uh, Arsenio Hall. And uh, of course, he had uh, James Earl Jones in this. Uh, you had um, Eddie Murphy playing different uh, characters here. You also even had Sam Jackson here. I mean, Coming to America is a comic classic. It has some really memorable scenes, some great moments. And it, like I said, it's, it's a great fish out war uh, film. You know, such a great one. It's, and not to mention, next year we got Coming to America 2 coming out, which which I'm really pumped for. So, yeah, if you guys haven't seen Coming to America by now, check it out. It's, it's a comic classic, you know. All right, coming in at number three. Now, this actually the film, the, this film is kind of the reason why I, I so had to do, uh, redo this one again. Because I literally forgot this movie came out in 88. For some reason, I know it came out in 89, I don't know why, but, uh, anyway, coming in at number three is, it's arguably one of my favorite animated films, and that will be Land Before Time. It is just, I mean, before we had, before there was The Lion King, there was Land Before Time, which, if you really want to look at, it, it was like Lion King, but with, uh, dinosaurs. That's why it was, so, and it was produced by Steven Spielberg, I mean, I always keep forgetting uh, Spielberg producers. Like, for some reason, I always keep forgetting. Like... And it was also directed by uh, one of the best animated directors there is, Don Blue, who, of course, gave us an American tale. I mean, who does who, who does love uh, Don Blue? I mean, one of the best animated directors there is. And, of course, it's, you know, pretty much about, like, this uh, dinosaur named Lilfoot, who's a uh, plant-eating uh, dinosaur, who's pretty much a long neck. And he's like orphan after his uh, mother, um, you know, while, like his, uh, you know, mother ends up uh, pretty much dying. Sort of like how in The Lion King, where, uh, where uh, Simba's dad, um, Simba's dad, Boss, ends up dying. Similar to that. So I guess you could say Lion King and Land Before Time are sort of similar, if you want to look at it. And also, you got like different other characters in this. Like, you got a uh, brachiosaurus named uh, Sarah. You got um, a little dinosaur named Ducky, who, by the way, is voiced by this uh, young actress named Judith Bar Barsi, who tragically passed away at a very young age. I think she passed away at the age of 10, I believe, or 10 or 11 or something like that. Really tragic, uh, pass really sad passing. And you also got um, the character Petrie. You got a great uh, T-Rex in this. You know, it has a great, uh, also at the end, it has a great, uh, song by Diana Ross, which is probably one of my favorite songs to an anime film. Such a great movie. One of the, it's in my top ten favorite anime movies of all time. It's just really cute. It's, you're gonna need some tissues if you're watching this. It's great, great, uh, film. And also, some of the sequels were pretty good, too. Like, not, not all the sequels were winners, but some of the sequels... After Lamb of Time was okay, like uh, the one with the uh, Great uh, Valley one. Um, uh, what was the uh, other one with like those uh, those bully dinosaurs? Forgot the name, but uh, no, I like that one. But uh, nothing beats the original Lamb of Time. And you know what? If Lion King comes out and it's a hit, I, I would love for Universal or some sort of studio or some someone to go ahead and make. 
and make a live action a Lamb Before Time movie with the same CGI effects as uh, they got with the Lion King, that would be cool to watch. I don't know if that ever happened because really, Lamb Before Time isn't as popular as Lion King, really, but it's still a great movie. Yeah. If you guys never seen Lion, uh, Lamb Before Time by now, you're missing out. It's it's a childhood favorite of mine. I mean, I used to actually own this film on VHS, and it's one of the great. If Definitely check the plan before time out. You, you won't um, be disappointed. All right, coming in at number. Okay, coming in at number two is going to be probably the best action movie of the '80s. I mean, come on, hands down, it's Die Hard. I mean, I probably could have had Die Hard as number one, but my number one favorite, I slightly enjoy it more. But, uh, Die Hard is great. One of the, you know, John McClane is one of the greatest action heroes there is. You know, this is, uh, of course, you had Bruce Willis in this, and it was, like, before um, Bruce Willis actually, um, you know, started giving a crap. Because Bruce Willis lately now, he just doesn't look like he cares anymore, you know? Like, the guy doesn't even try anymore. Which is sad, because Bruce Willis is just awesome, but, uh, whatever. Uh, you got the late, great Alan Rickman as probably one of the greatest movie films of all time, uh, Hans Gruber. You know, uh, um, you got, uh, the guy who played Carl Winslow on Family Matters, he plays one of the cops in this, so there's that. And, of course, Die Hard is always debatable on whether it's a Christmas movie or not, I mean... I still never could. I still never know if Die Hard is a Christmas movie or whatever. But you know. anyway, yeah, Die Hard is just awesome. I mean, great, fun, entertaining action. Um, Bruce Willis at the hype of his career, just he's great at John McClane. You know, uh, yeah, and of course, I really like some of the sequels as well, which I know lots of people poo-poo on the sequels and whatnot. But uh, I really get kicked out of the Die Hard films. But if but no Die Hard movies could ever live up to the original, and the original is just an all-time classic, you know? Alright, my number one favorite movie of 1988 is going to Rain Man, directed by the great uh, Barry Levinson, starring Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman. I mean, in it, uh, Tom Cruise, you know, plays like a car dealer named uh, Charlie Bibba, who learns that his, uh, fa- like, his estranged father um, ends up dying. So he returns home to uh, Cincinnati, where he uh, ends up discovering that he has an uh, older autistic brother named uh, Raymond that, of course, we call uh, Raymond. And Raymond, of course, is played by uh, played by Dustin Hoffman. And so, like, uh, they learn that um, his father's uh, three million uh, fortune is, like, being left to the uh, mental institution in which uh, Raymond ends up living. So, uh, Charlie ends up checking uh, Raymond out of the uh, faculty in order to return him to uh, Los Angeles. And so they end up having, like, a cross-country road trip. Then they end up going to a uh, to a casino because Raymond is a, is actually really smart and all. So he pretty much uh, uses uh, Raymond um, to pretty much get some big bucks, which is a little messed up if you look at it. But uh, anyway, I really like the chemistry between Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman. You know, uh, Dustin Hoffman won his Oscar for uh, Rayman. He was great as a role. I mean, uh, Barry Levinson, one of his best works he's ever done. You know, Tom Cruise was great. Such an awesome movie. It's really heartfelt. You know, crazy that it's based, it's, it's based on a true story, so that's pretty cool. I mean, it's a really amazing movie. I mean, if you guys have never seen Rayman, you know, go check out Rayman. It's a really good one. And it also won the Oscar for Best Picture, by the way, so, there's that. But, uh, yeah, Rayman is, it's just great. But, uh, anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me do the quick run now. Uh, number 10, Earth Girls Are Easy. 9, Big. 8, Twins. 7, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. 6, Beer Juice. 5, Child's Play. 4, Coming to America. 3, The Land Before Time. Two, Die Hard. One, Rain Man. Now, there's a lot of other movies that came out in 1980 that I probably could have added. A few others. Um, they Live is a good one. Uh, a Fish Called Wanda. Bull Durham. 
uh, Willow, Midnight Run, speaking of Dustin Hoffman, uh, The Blob, Mississippi Burning, uh, Working Girl, The Accused, uh, Mystic Pizza, Dangerous Liaison, Young Guns, uh, the Great Outdoors, Alien Nation, Dirty Ryan Scoundrels, uh, Scrooge, uh, there was like a couple of, uh, Heathers, Beaches, The Original Hairspray, Definitely Not Caddyshack 2, uh, Stand and Deliver is a good one, some really great films, but uh, let me leave it to you guys, what are some of your favorite movies of 1988? Drop a comment below, don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell for more notifications, this here is T-Movies, signing off.